Hello everyone! This video is going to be a book review on Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. And this pretty much follows Evie and her friends that are also diviners. There are two, Jericho, Jericho and Mabel, that aren't. But everyone else are diviners and they are out to pretty much save New York City and the whole world from the King of Crows. So this goes in with a lot of different point of views. That is all the, the Diviners. We also have Will, who is uh, Evie's uncle. Then we have Connor Flynn, who is new, who is also a Diviner, but he is in a mental hospital. We have Jake Marlowe, who used to work with Will. And we have the King of Crows and um, Adeline, Adeline, Adeline. We're gonna just go with Adeline because that's what I say in my head. And that is where I go into what I didn't like about this novel. There are too many point of views. Um, I can probably be okay with two different point of view switches, but there are at least 10 different point of view switches and it's just a little too much for me. So that kind of was a little disappointing. The first two books, there were uh, point of view shifts in the novel, but they were relatively long and there weren't as many, so I thought it was a pretty good um, balance for the first and second novels. But this one, too many. I also felt that the ending was too rushed while most of the book was slow, and I felt pretty bored in some places. Um, the writing was choppy, and it was unlike the other two novels that she had. Um, because Lil Bray is an amazing writer, but I felt that this was a little lacking in her writing. The next thing that I did not like is Jericho. <laughs> He's just the typical uh, blonde hair, blue eyed, six foot four masculine guy that the, you know, Evie is supposed to fall in love with and he just kind of got annoying after a certain point. Um, then there was a lot of killing people in the last few chapters. I don't know if that was totally necessary but I'll go into um, that and what I liked up, coming up soon. Um, the description used is it a bit in the wrong places like too much description. I don't really I'm not interested in what Jake Marlowe's, what, like, the woods around his house or what Jericho is thinking for, like, two pages or stuff like that I don't find is interesting to me. Maybe other people find it interesting and it's a bit of a world building experience, but I just wasn't into it. Um, and that slowed down the book for me. Um, and lastly, the 2D story plots and characters, I don't understand the King of Crows motives anymore. And I felt like she kind of changed the story from what it was going to be in the first two books to this one, maybe because of the political and social climate that was go that is going on at this point because she does acknowledge that in her acknowledgments and ending notes. So for what I did like, I loved seeing Sans's dedication to his mom, to Evie, to helping the people in New York City against these ghosts that are kind of overrunning the city and threatening people and harming them, and the other diviners. You do see uh, Sans's um, more more of his feelings for the people around him because he is originally uh, just a thief and just kind of a vagabond type of guy at first, but then in the third book you can see him change and it's kind of um, thanks to his 
uh, his dedication to finding his mom, to befriending these other diviners, to helping these other diviners, to helping the people in New York City against the King of Crows and these ghosts, and to Evie. I fell in love with Sam and I threw away Jericho. That's what happened. <laughs> I was kind of into Jericho for the first book, kind of slid away from Jericho in the second and for the third one, I fell in love with Sam. And Jericho is just running around the woods. I don't know where he is, that's fine by me. <laughs> I also really like the ending characters' lives that weren't important to the story anymore, and I'm not gonna say who, but uh, it's a she. And I just felt that her time in this book was just filler, and I was actually really surprised, but I was happy that at least that one person was um, killed off. Though the other ones that were killed off, I don't see it to be very necessary and there was just too many too much killing off characters in the last few chapters maybe for the next book it will make sense um, and that everything ties in together and I'm really hoping about that <laughs> but I can definitely see that it will tie in with this specific character um, for the next book the other ones that were killed off not so sure but I have an open mind I also really love seeing the history of the mental hospitals, the racism, eugenics of the 1920s. Um, she notes that all of that was historically accurate and she did some digging into that before writing this novel. Um, I really loved Evie's sassiness that keeps on giving. I really think that it establishes her as an original and an individual character, especially a female lead character in this novel. And she is not like other characters that you see in young adult novels. And finally, I really love the authentic slang and words used in this novel for the 1920s. I think they're really, they give me a chuckle. And I think that they're, um, the bee's knees. Maybe that's older. I didn't, I don't know. I think she says the cat's pajamas in this one. I know the bee's knees and the cat's pajamas. They're just really, <laughs> they just make me laugh. And I kind of wish that they were back in style. At least a few of them. But um, I really enjoyed reading the history part of this. That in, which includes the darkness of the mental institution and how they treated the patients, the racism, eugenics, um, and the slang and words that they use. There wasn't so much about the clothes, because I don't really think that's really important, the, but the other stuff that I just mentioned is really important. So I give this three out of five stars. The other two novels I gave five out of five stars. So um, this was a bit of a drop and I'm a little you know sad to say that and I really look forward to seeing the fourth book in this and see if this was kind of like a gather everything together but not piece it together type of book and then we see everything unfold in the other books to come in this series. I'm really hoping that's the case, and I'm really hoping that everything comes together in the next book. I'm not sure if she has one or two or maybe three other books planned, um, but I am definitely awaiting this series, even though it dropped two stars. Thank you for watching my review of Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. If you want to find me on all of my social medias, they're in the description box below. Thank you for watching. Have a great writing day.